Hi, how are you doing? Hope you're having a great day. Uh, this video will talk about uh, two related topics. Um, the first one is your ham radio license. So I'm excited to say that I just took the ham radio test for the technician level on uh, Wednesday and scored a 100%. And then on two, Thursday, applied for my ham radio license from the FCC after passing the test. And then on Friday, it was issued. So I am now KN6YMI. So that's K like Kilo, N like November, the little number six, and then Yankee Mike India. So that's great news. Um, so on that topic, the first two things that I wanted to point out with that, that I studied um, was hamstudy.org. So H A M s t u d y dot o r g and i'll put a link to that in the description below the second thing that i studied was this book so if you just want to pass the test and you're good at memorization hamstudy.org will get you through that hoop because it's a known database of questions um, with the same answers now they may rearrange the answers but the answers themselves so for example what frequencies will uh, bounce off the ionosphere, two band, six band, 10 band, S band. So they'll always give you those four, but the order uh, can possibly change. I'm not sure about that. Um, if you actually want to understand what you're studying, um, this book from ARRL um, is awesome. And I'll put a link to this in the description as well. So in this, they will actually teach you uh, what does everything mean? So when they ask when you put a voltmeter in parallel or in series, you know, what does that mean? The test objectives, uh, any good test is going to have an objective. You know, what are they trying to measure your level of knowledge on? So that's what will be in this. And then in the very back, the same thing that you see on hamstudy.org is there where you've got the questions. And it's kind of cool, you can fold the page over so that you can't see the answer and then go through and, and answer them. And it's double-sided, so that's in the back. So that's the ARRL Ham Radio License Manual. So um, the second topic is, do you need a ham radio license? So right now, I come from the background of trust but verify. So I guess right out of the shoot, what I would say is, it's a great idea. Like you really should go get it. Just like if you're going to fly drones, um, you really should go get your FAA part 107 so that you understand things. Um, the trust is also good because it teaches you the basics about flying and flight safety and, you know, sharing the airspace around. So I think just about every, everything in life, the more things change, the more they stay the same. So first something comes out as a novel idea. Ooh, I can take electronics and I can put it on something, and I can put propellers on it and I can fly it around. And in the beginning, it's kind of anybody could do anything. So it was probably the same way when man started riding horses and then now people are riding horses everywhere. And then someone invents the car and then now people are driving places. So you have these trails, but then people are like, well, instead of trails, let's crush something, flatten it. And now my car drives nicely over it. Then later you have interstates and then next thing you know we've got all these driving rules you know everybody drives on the right side here everybody drives on the left side uh in great britain so with drones i think it's kind of the same thing you have the safety of it so in the beginning you can kind of do whatever you want fly wherever you want um, and then now we have airspace rules because this getting sucked into the engine of a jet is a bad day either for the drone pilot or for the pilot of the aircraft um, even if it doesn't take the aircraft out, it still causes a, a lot of damage. And then the second part to this is that every drone, or most drones nowadays, modern drones, are going to have two RF links between them. The one is going to be um, your receiver for controlling it. And then your second one is going to be video. And the video is either... Coming back to goggles, if it's FPV, which I believe is this transmitter. So I've got two receivers and transmitters, um, one here and one here on this drone. This small Cinewhoop 
um, which I'll have a link to below, also has two. So you have this one and then you have this one. So it's two different receiver transmitter um, pairs. And they're going to be two different frequencies. So um, I don't remember off the top of my head the control. Um, but the other one, I believe, is either 2.8 or 5.4. <laughs> and I forgot that one too. Um, so my point in all this is, is um, obviously radio frequencies are shared. And so you want to do that in a responsible way. You wouldn't want your drone and your video to be jamming people's FM radio. There are garage door openers. There, if they've still got one, one of the old cordless phones that goes into the wall um, through a plain old telephone line. And so part of sharing the frequencies responsibly um, is to understand and know the rules. You know, everybody knows you drive on the right side of the road and you kind of know why, so that you don't hit someone head on. Well, it may not be as obvious with radio frequencies. Why don't I want to transmit at a certain frequency at a certain strength? Um, and so that's why it's important to get your ham radio license so that you understand the principles of frequency and principles of, you know, wattage, things like that. Now, I'm probably going to create a follow-up video to this because if you remember at the very beginning, I said I come from a trust but verified type of background and I find a lot of mixed things about whether you actually need a ham radio license. So some things have said it's the video. Something says it's a video over one watt. Some things say it's the video if it's over um, a half watt. I found one that said 25 um, milliwatts. Um, the company that makes this transmitter on <laughs> this drone um, says anything above 25 milliwatts. So there's a lot of conflicting information and then I've found some sites that uh, say no, it's anything transmitted on the control frequency. So there's just so many different things. I did find an FCC uh, roadmap that's got all the different frequencies. The um, FMV part of this was in the unregulated, but it said anything over one watt. But that may be it. I don't know. I'm still going to do some digging. Um, as soon as I saw that, I started looking into, you know, what do these actually transmit? And that's when I found that the manufacturer of this, uh, actually no, not of this, of this drone's transmitter says anything over uh, 25 watt, they have disabled because you have to go into the software tell it you have the ham radio license and then it'll enable that frequency um, to go up to a higher strength, a, a higher milliwatt or wattage of transmission. So anyway, that's that. Thanks for watching. If you've gotten this far, I appreciate your time. I know you can watch anything. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, go get your ham radio license. I think it's worthwhile. You learn quite a bit. There is three levels to it. There's the technician. Um, there's the general and then there's the amateur extra um, for ham radio um, license for FPV you just need the technician the additional ones just unlock more bands that you can transmit at I don't think the wattage state or changes um, above HF you're allowed I think I should know this 1500 um, and then below that it's a lower number um, now that I've passed the test I'm starting to forget stuff but anyway, that's what Google is for. You just Google it. And then once you get your um, transmission or your uh, ham radio license, there's a jump start program. I'm recording this in February of 2023. And your ham radio club should have something from QRZ, that's Quebec Romeo Z uh, Zebra, that gets you your first ham radio for like $21. It's normally a $70 radio with accessories like a software um, cable. Uh, and one or two other things that I'm forgetting and you get all of those things for 20 bucks plus shipping So for me in California, the shipping was 15 bucks for two day EPS um, So for like $35 I have my first ham radio and it's a good quality VHF radio. I have the same radio for um, uh, For air traffic control ATC and it was over $300. It was practically 400 so to get a quality radio, uh, you're going to be spending money. So with that, have a great day. Thanks for watching.